Welcome to EPG Partsala. Today I am going to discuss about the classification of genomics in which the first part is functional genomics. So <clears throat> to the, for the learning objectives we have divided this talk into five different parts. First introduction to genomics, then classification of genomics, then functional genomics and goal, application of genomics and finally summary. To start with genomics, what is genomics? Genomics is the study of an organism, gene, that includes genome structure and function. With the help of bioinformatic tools, because we know bioinformatic tools is very important in order to understand what is the gene sequence and their efficacy, one can analyze enormous amount of data to detect number one, variation in the genetic makeup that affect health, second, causes of disease, third, alter the drug response. And this is an exciting area in the biological sciences that has recently witnessed many conceptual and technical advancements. However, in the study of genomics, we are encountering two main problems. For instance, first, sequencing of entire genome and intra species genetic variations. In the first issue, it is really baffling to understand genome completely for many species and their large genome size. While in the second issue, within a given species, most individuals are genetically distinct in many ways. What does it mean actually? Actually, it means human genome sequence where genome for two individuals are genetically distinct and differing in the DNA sequences. These two problems and the potential of other novel application have given rise to new approaches in which taken together constitute the field of comparative genomics. What does it mean? That suppose if we wanted to check the sequence efficacy of the intra species or inter species, we can do the comparison between the sequences, their DNA struct, their DNA sequences, and we can fish out what are the differences, what are the mismatches, and how these two gene, gene sequence for a same gene is differ. Let us check the different a genome in the different organism starting from eukaryotes to prokaryotes. Let's see genome size comparison. In the genome size comparison, you can see human has 46 chromosome as we all know and about 80, 28 to 35,000 uh, functional genes with the 3.1 billion base pair of the sequence. Likewise in mouse, 40 chromosome, approximately 30,000 functional genes and 2.7 billion base pair. Likewise, buffer face, Anopheles, Drosophila, C. elegans, and E. coli, you can see the variation in the chromosome number, variation in the functional genes, and variation in the base pairs. So now the question arises: why do we need functional genomics? Why do we need functional genomics? Because you can see the organism, their number of functional genes, and perception of uh, percentage of gene with anticipated function because we know very well that all genes are not functional and all genes are not expressive and therefore you can see starting from the E. coli to human the approximate percentage of gene with anticipated per, uh, percentage is very varying. However, the genome sequence is much easier to study as the sequencing has already been accomplished in the following years starting from E. coli to human which is in E. coli 1997, East 1996, C. elegans 1998, Drosophila 1999, Arabidopsis 2000, Mouse 2002 and Human 2000. So now we should know why do we study this genomic part. So first of all to understand the efficacy Genomics is broadly classified into three heads. For instance, structural genomics, functional genomics, and comparative genomics. In the structural genomics, characterization of genome can be achieved with the help of DNA sequencing and sequence annotation, together with the mapping of the genes. Whereas in case of functional genomics, expression pattern of a gene is identified their expression profiling can be done, analysis of mutants with the aid of transcriptomics and proteomics. In the final category of the comparative genomics, DNA sequence variation and its effect on gene expression across the species can be identified. So you can see here the different important points 
in a structural, functional, and comparative genomics. Let's discuss more about the functional genomics. The principal aim behind functional genomics study is to understand the complex mechanism and relationship between gene to protein, that is genotype and phenotype, on a genome-wide scale. This would not only enable us to understand DNA structure and sequence to focus, rather it also tells us dynamic aspect of interaction, which includes gene transcription, translation, and protein-protein interaction. The outcome of these mechanisms have an attempt to answer many relevant biological questions. For instance, number one, temporal and localized gene expression. What does it mean? It means when and where the genes will be expressed. Number two, gene expression pattern at different cellular level and states, which means how gene expression level different in different cell types and states. Third, what are the functional role of different genes and in what cellular processes do they participate? Fourth, how genes are regulated? Fifth, how gene promoters are regulating these gene expression and in what cell type? Number six, how do gene and gene promoters work? Number seven, how do gene and gene products are interacting? And finally, how gene expression is altered in disease condition and how we could manipulate the gene for the therapeutic purposes. So now you can understand the efficacy of functional genomics. So basically, if we can take the points, the development and application of this functional genomics at wide level, which is the gene, genome wide level, system wide experiments, where approaches has to access the gene function by making use of information and different reagents. Reagents could be the antagonist, agonist, or in any kind of things. Which And this information can drew from the structural genomics part, which I will tell you later. It also go for the high throughput or large scale experimental methodology, which I am going to discuss here. Functional genomic experiments typically utilize large scale, high throughput analyze to measure and crack many gene or proteins. Here you can see in a biological experiment, we use the high throughput technology and this high throughput technology upon bioinformatic analysis giving us an outcome. And this, these outcomes could be genes, their transcripts and proteins. Understanding the functional genomics, that is, how gene and promote, genome and proteome interact to generate an organism's phenotype provides insight into the complex biological process, including human diseases. So let's study the, or summarize the previous three slides from genome to proteome, that is from the genome to gene to function. And here you can see the first part is genome, where is the functional gene is in action, Second is the expressosome, which is the protein part, is the, means expression study is done over there, that is at mRNA level. Third is proteome, where you can have the protein parts. And fourth is the metabolome, where is the functional aspect of the protein, whether it's expressive or in what magnitude, in what degree, in nut cell. What we can achieve by studying functional genomics is as follows. First, how genes are expre expressive, which means gene expression how genes are regulated, which means gene regulation, and if there is any mutation or if there is any mismatches or if there is any problem in the DNA sequence, we can study in the genome-wide sequence. And that is comes under the head of genome-wide mutagenesis. How to do, how to achieve? By data mining. Data mining, you have many software tools by which you can attain, you can achieve the different data from the genome sequence. Second is the serial analysis of the gene expression, which is SAGE. Third, microanalysis. Analysis. Fourth, subtracted cDNA library. Fifth, East 2 hybridization. Sixth, transgenesis. Seventh, transposon targeting. And finally, RNAi and miRNA. That is RNA interference 
and microRNA. Although this is the this is not the complete list, there are many more technology which we can use in order to study or in order to understand the efficacy of the functional genomics. So, what would be the gene expression data? Gene expression data where DNA makes RNA and RNA makes protein. So, more copies of mRNA for a gene leads to more protein. So, what does it mean? Based on the copy number, we are getting the protein. mRNA can now be measured for all the genes in a cell at one go and that is through the microarray technology because it gives us an opportunity to study many, many, many genes at one time. Can have 60,000 spots on a chip, which is the gene chip which comes under the microarray technology. And in that gene chip, if we hybridize, if we probe our it, uh, probe uh, or hybridize this chip by any probe, we can have the color changes which give the intensity of gene expression, which can be studied through the again through the software tool, and this is called the heat map. Gene regulation and regulatory regions and expression of gene can exclusively be regulated by various modalities for instances genes may be turned on or turned off in response to concentration of nutrients or to stress in case of stress certain genes are highly expressive whereas so many genes are down regulated because of the stress control regions often lie near to the segments coding to the protein. So, you know the regulatory protein, uh, regulatory elements. These regulatory elements can preferentially up or down depending on the situation encountered by the body or a cell. They can serve as a binding site for molecules that transcribe the DNA or by the bind regulatory molecules that can block transcription, which means it can either accelerate or retard the gene expression mechanism. So, as I told you about the data mining, so these are the different tools which comes under the data mining, say for example, BLAST, then PCR technology, intergene and MCDOC. There are so many um, software tools available in biological science which can use, which can give you the better understanding of genome sequence as well as the proteome sequence. So, what would be the goal for the functional genomic technology? So, generate a full length of cDNA clone and sequence that which represent human genes and model organisms. Support research on methods for studying function of non-protein coding sequences. Third, Develop technology to comparative analysis of the gene expression across the species, whether it's interspecies or intraspecies. Improve methods for genome wide mutagenesis. And finally, develop technology for large scale protein analysis. As I discussed in my previous slide, there are some more technologies by which we can achieve these goals, and these are the transfection where we are introducing a foreign gene in any model system. Second, the real-time PCR. Unlike normal PCR, it will give you an information, the mRNA expression in the initial phase of PCR, RNA interference. In the RNA interference, you can block or you can check the efficacy of the gene exp expression experiment by using inhibition or using the RNA interference which will stop the transcription per se as well as translation. Mutational analysis. In the mutational analysis, you can have an idea what would be the proper, what would be the mutation, what kind of mutation and how these mutations can regulate or affect the gene transcription mechanism. SNP analysis. If you want to study the polymorphism, you can go for the SNP. And microarray, as I discussed, at once you can have many gene information on a DNA chip. Now come to the epigenomic, epigenetics or epigenomics. This is another wing of functional genomics. Epigenetics is defined as the study of inherited changes, which means phenotype or gene expression caused by many mutations. So in an individual, if the phenotype 
and genotype is altered, it must be either through the heredity or by any, any kind of mutation on the DNA sequence. So, epigenetic markers include DNA methylation and modification of the histone protein. So, let us talk about the pattern of methylation because methylation is an important phenomenon for gene expression regulation. In eukaryotes, DNA can be modified by methylation of cytosine base while in the prokaryotes, DNA methylation occurs primarily on adosine base. Aberrant or increased methylation has been correlated with gene silencing and development of several cancer. Now come to the histone part. Histones are adjoined with the different covalent modification including methylation and these histones can also be regulated by different mechanisms such as methylation, histone DNA acetylation, phosphorylation, ubiquitination and sumylation. Acetylation is the most common study of these modifications and a strong correlation between the histone acetylation and active transcription. Conversely, many histones methylation events are correlated with transcriptional silencing because if there will be more GCD sequence, if there will be more CPG islands, if there will be more methylation, the gene transcription can be silenced. Multiple modification can exist simultaneously and are likely working together to influence chromatin structure also and gene expression. There are common methodology by which we can study the epigenomics and here some of the techniques are bisulfide sequencing, chromatin immunoprecipitation assay, midship, HRM, mobility shift assay and many more. Now come to the other part of the genome genomics study. In the functional genomics, suppose a protein is altering gene expression, how it modulates the different signaling pathway that is signal transduction pathway. Because if one particular protein part is altered, it will give rise to the defective protein at the end or if there will be a mutation, it will lead to a defective protein or altered protein. So, biological pathway includes metabolic, regulation, regulatory and signaling pathway mechanism that organize and coordinate the activities of a cell. Biological pathways often interact with one another to form biological network and this is also called the gene network or pathway network. Pathway analysis is used in system biology to build a better picture of how the individual components of a biological system interact to create the larger function functional system. As I ex explained you, techniques that enables a screening, of, a screening of expression of multiple gene or genes product sample, simultaneously are typically used to generate data for pathway analysis as deregulation of a pathway can result in disease such as cancer, pathway analysis are often involved, which comprises of expression pattern between normal and disease sample. While almost any biological analysis tool can be used to generate data for pathway analysis, there are again certain techniques which would enable us to understand the biological networks and these are the luminex bead analysis assay, microanalysis assay, real time PCR and many proteomics tools such as 2D page analysis, is 2 hybridization and many more. Then now a, a pertinent question, what would be the outcome of functional genomics which facilitate a biomarker discovery? 
Why this biomarker discovery is important? Because if we understand where is the problem in the gene and thus we are getting an altered protein, what could be the therapeutic approach? And the therapeutic approach can be first modus operandi of a biomarker, how to discover a biomarker and what could be the experimental approach to discover a biomarker. As per NIH guidelines, biomarkers are objectively measured and evaluated as an indicator of normal biological function. Pathogenic process or pharmacological responses to a therapeutic intervention. So point one, what would be the modus operandi of a biomarker? The goal of biomarkers research is to discover gene or protein marker which can ameliorate the diagnostic, prognostic or therapeutic outcomes for patient and to assist in the development of novel drug candidates. How to discover these biomarkers? So biomarkers can be discovered through differential expression analysis, which is the identification of mRNA, microRNA or protein expression level as influenced by disease stage therapy or other difference between the sample cohort. What are the different approaches through which biomarkers can be discovered is again the microanalysis, statistical analysis, DNA sequencing, spectrophotometry, real-time PCR and so on and so forth. What we have explained to you what is the functional genomics, what is the structural genomics, what is the comparative genomics, what is the mutational genomics and now I am going to give the summarized highlight of various techniques that I have already explained to you in this module that how these things are important to understand the functional genomics <coughs> study. To achieve the final outcome of functional genomics, we have already explained that many techniques are used such as the PCR, there are modification of the different specific targets of DNA for the cloning purpose, molecular photocopying which is necessary for the molecular and genetic analysis, a study of isolated pieces of DNA that are next to impossible without PCR amplification and I also explained to you why PCR is so important and because PCR can amplify even the tiniest amount of DNA which means tiniest concentration of DNA to a, to a significant concentration. So evolution of PCR is very important to study the gene and evolution of PCR to real-time PCR was a great breakthrough where the why do we need real-time PCR that the real-time PCR is the advanced development of PCR with high accuracy, wide dynamic range, more specific and quantitative, highly sensitive, reduced contamination in many folds rapid accuracy, accuracy and simultaneous quantification of multiple samples. We have also explained the efficacy of real-time PCR that there are different steps which involve the real-time PCR is intercalation of the fluorescent dye with double-stranded DNA, then probe displacement and cleavage and fluorescent reporter released. We have also explained that why real-time PCR has many folds, different approaches that firstly, it gives you a look into the reaction directly on the monitor and you can really see that what is the efficacy of amplification on screen, reaction can be precisely calculated. There is also no need to run the PCR product out on a gel, which we are commonly doing in the classical PCR. And the greatest advantage of all is the real time uh, that in the real time PCR, data can be used to perform truly quantitative analysis of gene expression. Real time PCR can give the expression pattern in the initial phase of PCR cycle 
which is not possible in the classical PCR. Now come to the RT-PCR, which is the reverse transcription PCR, and it is a technique through which using of amplified DNA from RNA, and the PCR reaction is preceded by a reaction using reverse transcriptase, which converts RNA to cDNA, and cDNA is amplified. RT-PCR is also called as a qualitative PCR because it is qualitatively Measure the amplification of DNA. RT-PCR is highly sensitive technique to detect the expression of very low copy number and different RNA molecules in the cellular tissues. Quantitative RT-PCR, as I have already explained to you, the QRT-PCR is commonly based on the principle of PCR, which is mainly used to amplify and altogether quantify a target DNA molecule. Additionally, QRT-PCR is more sensitive than conventional RT-PCR and QRT-PCR assay have numerous significant advantages such as it's utilizing fluorescent reporter molecule to monitor the product produced during each cycle of the PCR. Now, come to the southern hybridization, which is also an important tool to understand or to study the genomics and southern hybridization is a well-known technique in the molecular biology where the digestion of fragmented DNA is separated on agarose gel followed by denaturation and neutralization. Next, transfer of the fragmented DNA to a nitrocellulose or nylon or PVDF membrane, whatever is the positively charged membrane, followed by the UV cross-linking at 250 nanometer and the baking to complete immobilize the DNA, then prehybridization and hybridization steps are followed and then go for the radio level probe in order to identify the signal on autoradiogram. Come to the next technique that is the microarray analysis. So microarray analysis, as I said before, that it can identify a many genes at one time, so there are positive and negatives of the microarrays. The process of microarrays are to analyze the behavior of several genes at a time. Very fast process that has like 150 copies of an array, 12,000 genes can be printed in a daily basis. However, some negatives, intensive labor is required to prepare for the whole microarray process and initially open a facility dedicated to microarray technology is expensive. Still, this is expensive, but at the same time, we can get much more convincing data. So what could be the application of microarray is very clear. That is a gene expression profiling, polymorphism or SNP detection, host pathogen interaction, genotypic and genome variation, drug target identification, DNA protein interaction, drug resistance and disease diagnosis, developmental genetics, environmental monitoring, vaccine candidate identification. Apart from that, we have also discussed about the ES2 hybridization where we are checking the DNA DNA interaction or DNA protein interaction. And in this, we can check that how a two DNA in the close proximity interacting in the 2D gel electrophoresis we have already discussed and SNP we have shown that how SNP are common type of genetic variation in population and the position in a genome where one individual has only one nucleotide and other has different nucleotide. There are huge numbers of SNP in every genome and number of SNP also give rise to RFLP but few of which do not because the sequence in which the lie is not documented by any restriction enzyme. To summarize this portion, developmental and application of genetic mapping, sequencing, and computation with the help of bioinformatics tool to analyze the genome of organism is subdivided into three categories. First, a structural genomics, where genetic and physical mapping of genome is possible. Functional genomics, to analyze gene function. 
whether it's a functional or non gene also comparative genomics comparison of genome across species thanks